Well, everybody, the day has come. According to the latest announcement from senior SpaceX officials, the endeavor to launch Starship for the third time is set to take place in February of 2024. With a series of upgrades for Starship as well as Super Heavy, SpaceX is guaranteed to create results. Like Musk said, we've got a really good shot of reaching orbit with Flight 3. So in today's episode of Alpha Tech, we will find out how the upgrades of Starship and Super Heavy in this third flight are drastically different from the first and second. Now without further ado, let's jump right in. In the 22 years since it was founded, SpaceX, a rocketry firm set up by Elon Musk, has become the world's premier space superpower. Its inexpensive and reusable Falcon 9 rocket dominates the launch industry. The firm sends more mass into orbit each year than every other company and country on Earth combined. However, it still has bigger ambitions for the world's largest rocket, Starship. In 2023, Starship underwent two comprehensive tests, but both launches ended with a spectacular explosion. The dynamic approach is part of the SpaceX ethos. Diverging from the more conservative methods of its older counterparts, SpaceX embraces iterative design, a philosophy centered on frequent attempts and deriving valuable lessons from failures. This willingness to iterate and learn from each experience sets SpaceX apart, contributing to its reputation for innovation and adaptability in the ever-evolving field of space exploration. That's why the third flight scheduled for next month will showcase all the new lessons SpaceX has learned from the two previous launches. So, what are the latest changes that SpaceX has implemented for the third flight of Starship? Before delving into specific details, we should understand the true cause of the Stage 2 Starship explosion which many people have been curious about until now. The cause has been disclosed by Elon Musk, the director of SpaceX, in a recent 2024 update. Musk said the failure was linked to venting liquid oxygen propellant near the end of the burn. That venting, he said, was needed only because the vehicle was not carrying any payload. Flight 2 actually almost made it to orbit, he said. If it had a payload, it would have made it to orbit because the reason that it actually didn't quite make it to orbit was... We vented the liquid oxygen, and the liquid oxygen ultimately led to a fire and an explosion. That venting would have been unnecessary if the ship had a payload, presumably because it would have been consumed by the Raptor engines on the vehicle in order to reach orbit. So the explosion is quite normal. Having Starship's second stage with the weight to represent a payload was very necessary for test flights into orbit. The company will have to simulate the payload to test the coordination between thrust parameters for liftoff and precise first stage separation. A lighter rocket requires less power whenever engines are involved. For test launches, depending on the objectives, it has to match flight specifications to ensure performance at the correct requirements. The explosion is simply a matter of uncontrolled fuel venting combined with friction with the atmosphere at extremely high ascent speeds. And this is not a significant concern for SpaceX. Therefore, the director of SpaceX appears quite confident about the next Starship test flight. I think we've got a really good shot of reaching orbit with Flight 3, he said. The issue causing the Starship explosion has now been clarified, and what SpaceX needs for the upcoming launches is hardware upgrades, even if they are small, but still hold significant importance for the long-term journey of Starship. First and foremost is the upgrade to Starship's communication and antennas. The incident during the second launch is likely fresh in our memories. At an altitude exceeding 148 kilometers, the Starship's Stage 2 momentarily lost signal with the ground system. Though the disruption was brief, any lapse in communication during a rocket flight is deemed a safety concern. This underscores the meticulous attention given to even the slightest anomalies in the pursuit of secure and reliable space travel. To address this issue, SpaceX has installed four Starlink terminals on the leeward side of the nose cone of Ship 28 replacing the single terminal previously integrated with the payload bay access hatch. This modification is expected to enhance the new ship's connectivity during flight, complementing the existing radio antennas. Next is the modification to the vents located on the top of the nose cone. 
Nose cone vent diverters or similar components are often designed to manage the flow of gases or fluids around the nose cone or payload fairing of a spacecraft. They may be used to redirect or control the release of pressure, vent gases away from the critical components, and ensure stable aerodynamic conditions during ascent and descent. Instead of two open vents where gas and vapor could escape in all directions as seen in Ship 25, now, starting with Ship 28, you will notice a set of cowbell diverters attached to the two large header tank vents. These diverters are designed to redirect vapors downward, stabilizing the airflow and preventing issues that could lead to explosions. As for the latest upgrades to Super Heavy, in addition to the improvements introduced since the first Starship launch, such as transitioning from a hydraulic thrust vector control system to an electric one, implementing hot staging to aid the stage separation process, the upcoming launch of Super Heavy Booster 10 brings noteworthy changes. In terms of structure, Super Heavy has unveiled a new design for the common bulkhead, featuring flatter domes made from stretch-formed panels. While we have seen renderings and even hardware with such features since 2022, it is only with Booster 10 and subsequent iterations that SpaceX has truly implemented these changes. Overall, these alterations are largely anticipated given the progression we have witnessed, but their full realization begins with Booster 10. With increasing confidence in the current design of Starship and Super Heavy, SpaceX now appears to be looking for ways to streamline and simplify manufacturing while simultaneously optimizing Starship's changes. Regardless of whether one is dealing with a highly advanced rocket factory or a smartphone assembly line, part count reduction is a very common and desirable way to reduce both cost and complexity. Furthermore, the change in shape significantly reduces the number of individual weld joints and to a slightly lesser extent the overall length of the welds, thus decreasing the potential points of failure. Another important note is that this change did not involve relocating the dome on the tank. However, there are still minor adjustments in the total propellant volume in each tank, although the impact may be negligible. Additionally, reinforcement measures have been applied to the dome at the top of the booster, which directly interacts with exhaust gases at temperatures in the thousands of degrees Celsius. During the second Starship hot staging test, the stage separation process went smoothly, but Super Heavy still experienced an explosion. The causes were attributed to the fuel shift combined with fuel leakage from the tanks leading to the explosion. To address the fuel leakage issue involves researching material resilience, and the only way to tackle this is by reinforcing the tanks inside the booster and thickening the upper dome to prevent potential melting of welds due to excessive heat. Of course, we cannot overlook the issue of fuel flow in Super Heavy when it performs the return to Earth maneuver. At that time, the booster had to ignite a subset of engines to control the atmospheric re-entry, and what probably happened is that almost all the fuel was exhausted. This rocket is, as you know, 60 to 70 miles up in the sky, swinging back and forth, and there's not much propellant left in the tanks. And so, it turns out to be a really challenging ordeal to get the oxidizer and the methane propellant all the way to the bottom into the engine to reactivate. Therefore, the natural propensity of fuel is actually to rise to the top of the vehicle, SpaceX will certainly implement some kind of technical solution to precisely regulate the fuel flow. Finally, the enhancements made in anticipation of the third launch extend to the crucial support infrastructure for this massive rocket. The launch pad was likely not heavily impacted by the second Starship launch, leading to repairs that did not consume much of their time. Recently, SpaceX has shifted more attention to the tank farm area, where they've initiated the removal of tanks affected by the first launch. New horizontal tanks have been transported and installed. Pump valves are regularly inspected and replaced as needed. These activities are anticipated to be completed before the third Starship launch to ensure optimal results for the flight. Well, that's about it for today's episode. We hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please let us know what you think about all that's happening at SpaceX right now in the comment section down below, because your feedback is very important to us and helps us make better videos for you. And for that, we thank you so much, and we hope to see you again next time.